Sports fans, if you want to go to a sporting or concert event this summer, then use our friends over at SeatGeek to find the tickets for you. They've got a rating system to help you figure out the absolute best price. You can see a picture of the vantage point from each seat. And better yet, if you use my special code BBALL, then SeatGeek will give you $20 off your first purchase. So download their app, pick an event, and go in the settings area to enter in my code BBALL and help me help you help SeatGeek help you. You in? The Golden State Warriors completed the most historic season of all time and had been cruising through the playoffs in a collision course for a Cavaliers rematch in the finals. And then OKC happened. Suddenly all of their gorgeous motion offense ground to a halt. They couldn't move around the court freely, Steph Curry looked injured, Draymond Green looked a little scared, and they were pushed to the brink of elimination. The Warriors were able to right the ship, but it was by no means an easy feat and one where they had to dig deep to find the right combinations of players and offensive execution to overcome the surprising intensity and incredible length of the Oklahoma City Thunder defense. Cut to the next round where LeBron James and his Cleveland Cavaliers waited patiently. I had predicted that the Warriors would suddenly feel like they took off 20 pound weight vests from around their necks and the Warriors have not disappointed. They've ran the Cavs off the floor in two straight games and in the process displayed the kind of ball movement and shot making that OKC simply would not allow. So let's take a look at some of their most common sets and compare how the Cavaliers are defending them versus what the Thunder did. The first set is called Motion Strong and is ripped from the pages of Greg Popovich's Spurs playbook. Curry dribbles across half court, swings the ball, and stays on that same side. Already we see Livingston open on this curl when Kyrie doesn't step up to bump the cutter. On the weak side, a back screen is set on JR's man, no communication as Barnes is wide open on his cut. Jefferson has no idea where the ball is while JR Smith blows a tire and ends up out of bounds and an easy wraparound pass gets Ezeli a dunk. Here's the same play defended by the Thunder. On Curry's slip screen, he is wide open, but with Durant guarding Green, he's reluctant to even try passing that. The Thunder switch the pin down for Curry perfectly while Ibaka is physical with Ezeli. Another good switch between Waiters and Russ contains Livingston. And finally, the rest of the defense collapses to eliminate any lanes for Green, who drops it out of bounds. Off of a made basket, there is no excuse for the Cavaliers to jog down the court and get cross-matched so quickly. Yet, Kyrie doesn't sprint and ends up on Barnes. So the Warriors run motion strong and reverse it to Barnes down low in the post. LeBron incorrectly helps one pass away, J.R. Smith loses his man on the cut, and he has to give up two free throws. With a similar attack on the Thunder defense, there is no issue with matchups. Russ is already being physical with Steph, they're running the offense from 8 feet above the 3 point line, Adams is pushed up to deter the reverse pass back to Bogut, and the offense has immediately lost its rhythm. They go low post to Green, who's being guarded by a guy with even longer arms than him, and on the handoff, Robertson is handsy, chasing him around fast, and it forces Clay to do this pass much faster than he wanted to, and it's a bad turnover. With this option, they don't reverse the ball all the way, coming back to Steph Curry on the right wing. LeBron should be stepping up towards the ball to bump the cutter, but instead wants Thompson to come all the way from the weak side to pick up Bogut. This allows a free cut to the block and an open jump hook. Motion strong again when they swing it back to Curry on the right wing. They actually catch the Thunder on a poor switch when Waiters is woefully behind the play and out of position. But Durant not only has the time to be annoyed with Dion, he can swoop across the lane and erase this shot with his length and athletic ability. Wow. Having Curry set an off-ball screen is always a great idea to get him open for a shot, and Kyrie just isn't up to the task. He's not in a stance, he's too slow closing out, and Steph takes advantage. They run motion strong all the way through to Steph setting a back screen for Clay. 
The Thunder switched this expertly, with Waiters in good position to make Curry turn his back. Everybody is in good position and knows where the ball and their man is, leaving Curry to isolate a tough step back shot. The next play we'll look at is called motion weak, because the guard enters the ball to the wing, then shallow cuts to the weak side wing where the ball gets passed. Moskov does a really nice job to evade the cross screen and get physical with Bogut on the inside ball screen, then sprint back to his man after handing Curry back off to Delhi. However, JR falls asleep and reacts way too late to this handoff, giving Curry a wide open look. Here's the exact same play, and Ibaka does a good job to stay with his man Izili across the screen and to the ball screen. A lot more pressure on Curry here, and he has to loop this pass down to Izili. Watch how fast Ibaka is to recover and pressure, forcing the miss from 3 feet. One more time, you can see Durant does a nice job on the weak side on green, evading the cross screen, and when Curry goes to set an elbow screen, no one is there, and Russ continues to be physical with him. Robertson refuses to leave Clay in lockstep with him across the court. Another good switch on the handoff and contest of the wild miss. Now let's look at some triangle influence, where the Warriors are using a pinch post action to attack quite a bit in the finals. Some false action on top before Curry hits Bogut coming up to the pinch post, and follows his pass around the high side for a handoff. Love was completely confused by the clay cut when he was supposed to be guarding Bogut, and when he finally does get back into position, LeBron wandered off of Iguodala, who just walked to the hoop wide open for the layup, and LeBron was still confused when it was all over. Here's the same action on the left side with Livingston and Iguodala, and watch Barnes set a cross screen, then slip it. Fry was out of position, there is no ball pressure, and it's a gorgeous pass and layup. While we couldn't find an exact version of this, this step up screen is very similar action to pinch post, but with Adams and Russ chasing Curry, he simply can't find the airspace to make a pass back to the rolling Bogan. Next up is one of my favorites, the weave into ball screen. This is usually three handoffs across the top, then a ball screen for Clay and it's well defended until the ball screen, where Bogut gets rolling to the hoop. Clay could have hit him on the short roll, but it took Love so long to get back in position that he's still open under the basket for the layup. On this weave, the Thunder switch it with Durant on top, and when they try to attack the pick and roll, Adams pressures well, and Durant is so long that Clay leads Azili way too much and into a turnover. This time, the Warriors almost caught them with a bad switch, but KD is able to recover, and on the ball screen, they've got a long and fast Ibaka to switch on to Clay. Durant can then help and recover with his length to bother this three-point shot into a brick by Draymond. The Warriors' offense has no shortage of pin downs for the Splash Brothers, and on this play, they catch J.R. Smith trying to go over the top of the screen. He gets picked off and Love has to get out to stop the jumper, which just allows Clay to get to the front of the rim for an and one. And the Cavs switching has been a catastrophe all series. LeBron wants the switch, Shumper doesn't, and it leaves Draymond all alone with Love out of position to come over and help as well. Meanwhile, the Thunder had guys like Robertson who are long, quick, and relentless. And even though he seemed to get caught on this pin down, look how quick he can close that gap to contest. And even on a simple quick hitter out top, Steven Adams routinely covered lots of ground and made these shots more difficult than the Warriors are used to. And lastly, my favorite Warriors action is the low post elbow split, especially when it's Curry, Clay, and Draymond involved. Here, Curry enters to the low post and sets the split screen for Clay near the elbow. The Cavs switch this okay, but as Clay cuts off the low post, Thompson forgets his man has the ball leaving Draymond an easy shot from close in. Here's the same action, but with KD on Draymond, he was causing all sorts of problems just by getting his long arms up and in the passing lane. Draymond fumbles this, it wasn't an open pass anyway, and it's a turnover. Now we get this action with Livingston and Clay, and watch how J.R. Smith turns the wrong way, moves in the wrong direction, and allows a back cut to Clay. You couldn't defend this any worse if you tried. Meanwhile, the Thunder's physicality and length got the Warriors so out of sorts, three players ended up in a two-man action, and they both tried cutting back door, and this ended up as a bad turnover. Here, the Cavaliers simply don't get any pressure on anybody, allowing a backdoor cut to Barnes and a sweet bounce pass from Bogut when Love doesn't get his hand out in the passing lane. 
And even when the Warriors could get mismatches in this action, the threat of Durant chasing Iguodala down is enough to throw this whole thing off. And KD's contest in the air causes this awkward shot to miss. So we leave you with this set, and a completely unnecessary switch leaves Kyrie guarding Harrison Barnes. The split isn't even needed, as Kyrie does a silly reach around attempt and allows Barnes an easy layup on the right side when LeBron does not come over to help like he should. So there you have it sports fans, this is the main reason why the Warriors have smashed through the Cavaliers the first two games of the NBA Finals. While the Cavaliers have played much better at home during these playoffs, they have not played anyone remotely close to this good. And until some of these defensive issues are cleared up miraculously overnight, then I fear the result will be similar and the series won't last much longer.